Hey guys, this is Jim Bales with Motorhome Rehab Ranch, and uh, it's a shirt, you know, shirt, pocket shirt, useful, you need this, get a member, 50 bucks, you get one, anyway, hi, glad you're with us today, uh, Dennis uh, Hill, Hill. <laughs> Did it again. Okay. Anyway, Dennis Hill came down in his Z06 Corvette just for fun. Uh, where'd you come from? Uh, Lafayette, Indiana. Lafayette, Indiana. Just no. 999 miles. Holy crap. That's a long ride, dude. That is quick. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's going to be the heckler today. We're going to have a seat right there in the uh, heckler oh, okay. uh, booth there. Thank you. And uh, we're going to talk today a little bit about audio video. What I mean by audio video used to be called, hang on. My first job out of high school was, uh, was jocking car stereos. The most important tool that we had was, a, is it focused okay? Mm -hmm. Looks good. How's the sound, guys? We're working on it. Don't have the microphone yet, but we got the GoPro, all right? Uh, my first job out of high school was jocking car stereos. The most important tools we had was a, was a, uh, a uh, metal file with tape, with tape on the handle and a file, because all the dashes were metal, right? And I guess I'm dating myself, but what can I tell you? And um, back then, there was just called stereo, right? Well, actually, I put in a eight track that was a four track. It was mono. <laughs> anyway, again, I'm dating myself. But today, yeah, hang on. we know who we are. We're Motorhome Rehab Ranch. Today, you got to call it audio video because video has uh, just about taken over our world. I mean cell phones and digital audio and boy gosh it's gone everywhere <clears throat> and it's amazing what you can get the new audio video stuff for the money I mean back, back I worked at techniques and we had car stereo right car stereo you know cassette deck stuff like that four hundred dollars for a decent stereo I mean you know man you today for for hundred and fifty dollars for a hundred dollars, you can buy something that I couldn't even imagine today. So <clears throat> the, the money involved in an audio video system isn't the equipment as much as it is how you're going to wire it, the logic of it, and how you're going to use it. If you look at some of the new uh, Alpines and Kenwoods and the high-end stuff, there's more buttons on that sucker. I don't know if you'll ever get to use all of them. And who, why would you want to? I mean, you know, if you don't have any cassettes, why do you have... <laughs> It, how the cassette works. Nobody has any CDs anymore. You know, a lot of radios don't even have CDs now in the dash. So, <clears throat> as far as the hardware goes, it's very, very inexpensive. But to integrate audio video into a GMC motorhome, um, it's not as hard as you think, but there, there are a couple of basic things that you, you really need to know. Now, there are, look at the, the sound system, if you want to call it that. I mean, in, in the coach, the... Uh, I'm not Picasso. Call this the front, just to make sure you understand. So you got you got two four by tens back here. You got two little three and a halfs up here. Mm -mm. Boy, that's good sound, huh? <clears throat> well, I listen to three and a half when I'm listening to EPR, NPR or something like that. But if you want music, you need to have more than this. Now, in the early coaches, '73 and '74 and some '75s. It was called a common ground system. Common ground meant that there was a wire from the radio going to each speaker. But only one wire, the other wire of the speaker, was grounded. So this is a common ground. Each one of the speakers had, they, all the grounds were in common. Now the reason for this was back, back in the day, <laughs> when 5 watts was a lot of power, common ground system was a basic uh, uh, single transistor output. Well, if you want to get more power out of the thing, you want to have two wires from a floating ground system. The later models, floating ground system, again the motorhome again, and your little speakers, and these, there were two wires going to each speaker, and so forth, okay? All new radios that you'll buy are going to be floating ground because it's a push-pull or 
Yeah, we're not going to get into that. But basically, it's going to need two wires to each speaker. Two to the front, two to the back. So there's eight wires on a uh, radio if you buy one today. If you have a 73, that means you're going to need to rewire the coach. You go, oh, I can't do that. It's not that big of a deal. It really isn't. If on the front speakers, if you want to run, run, run uh, new wires to your front speaker, here's your side window. Right? Okay? And below that is the dash panel, plastic dash panel, and then the dash. Hey, not bad. <laughs> not bad. Not bad, huh? Anyway, uh, you come out on the early coaches, you can take out the glove box and you get right into the back behind this cabinet, this uh, panel here. So you just pull that back, run the wire through there. You've got a trim piece on the back of the A-frame window, right? Yeah, something like that. Put the yeah, new there we go. Put the new window in. Put the new one in? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The new window in that I just bought. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You did just get them. Yeah, the new window. There. There you go. All right. So you take this piece of trim out. Get the wire come out behind the plastic. Go right behind here. You go up into the headliner cap. Just go right up there, right behind there, and right here is that panel with the speaker and the light in it. You can go right to it. Boom. Right into it. Same thing on the other side. It's not that hard to run a speaker wire. Now, if you want to go to the back, same thing on the driver's side. New window. <laughs> So you come out of the dash, dash is up here, come out of the dash into this panel below, you come up around the back side of the safe frame window, go up in here, and there's a channel in your coach. If you have cabinets there, it's inside the cabinet. If you don't have a cabinet, there's a plastic panel there. You can run wire all the way front to back with a pull wire. So if you're going to run a pair of wires to the back, you got two wires, you run them through here. If you have to pull this off, understand you'll probably break it because it's 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 brittle ABS. It didn't have good UV uh, retardant or anything like that back in the day. So you'll probably break it, so you may want to put something else up there. Uh, if they're two small wires, you can actually tuck it right under there or in the top of that because where it's held underneath is right there. So there's a cavity in the top and the bottom that you can run wires through to get it into the cabinet. Then from there you can go behind the bulkheads. In the back of the coach, let's see if I make the back look any better at all. Okay. Yeah. The wires are coming up here. Okay. This one's real easy. You just drop it right into the into the behind the headliner cap and you can go right there. This one right here actually is real easy too because you got the window. Right? You just come down to the window and tuck it under the window right across there and then come up to here and you got it here. So the two wires that come up here, one goes to there, one of them gets tucked under here, goes into there. No problem. It's easy to, not easy. Anybody that tells you it's easy, hit them once. Nothing's easy. <laughs> If it was, why would you be watching me? <laughs> but if you just take your time and understand that, that what you're trying to do is to get the wire where you don't see it. It doesn't have to be running conduit and all this stuff. You want to make it in a place that it's not going to get chafed or anything like that. And color code it. Yeah, and you want to be sure you, you don't use one wire. Call a home run. So when you get on one end, it's a pair that's red with with copper and silver and on the other end it happens to be the same thing. So many people get different wires and different colors and they got to remember it. If you do remember it, how long are you going to remember that? So, you know, you use the color codes and you use what the wires look like. Speaker wire that you're going to use, if you're going to go to, I don't know, Radio Shack or wherever you, you need to go, um, we've got a great place, Skycraft. You ever heard of that? Oh, man. It's in Winter Park. I would rather go to Skycraft than Universal. They got all kinds of military surplus, electronics, pneumatics, you know, hydraulics. Wow, cool stuff. 
Anyway, if you, you're going to get paired wire to wire all this. You don't use single strand, it's kind of bulky and all this. And the paired wire that they have, speaker wire, is very flexible. It's, uh, a, a lot of strands, so it's real flexible, it's really easy to run. Don't get this 20 gauge stuff, get 16 or 14 gauge speaker wire. Okay? If you're an audiophile and you're worried about skin charge and, and uh, <laughs> some other things like that, do it any way that you want. You know, um, that's the great thing about America. We don't have to do it all the same. We don't have to kill each other, usually. <clears throat> so anyway, running the speaker wire is no problem. Now I really would suggest, if you're doing it, to put more than four speakers. It's getting a little better. That's the front. I'll make the front flat so you can figure it out. All right, you got two little speakers here. Two four by tens back here. Not much there imaging because your head is right here. So what are you going to hear? You're going to hear this one. You're going to hear that one? Well, you'll turn it up a little, a little more and then your wife will say, why would you turn that up? So you can't do that. Okay? Here, let me put this up here. So, how are you going to get good imaging, good stereo sound without all kinds of stuff? Let me give you one, one way that, that we do it. In the, in, the, in the panel, here's your side panel, here's your window, new one, uh, new window, new window, new window. There's a ledge right here, it has an ashtray in it and pocket. We usually cover that because the pocket's cracked and everything's cracked up, so you cover that. But below here, right here, there's enough 